Hello, Matt here from chemistrystudent.com. In this video, we're going to look at the electrophilic addition reaction between an alkene and a hydrogen halide. We're going to talk about why and how this reaction happens, outline the reaction mechanism, and look at how we can predict the major and minor products of such reactions with unsymmetrical alkenes. Carbon-carbon double bonds and sigma and pi bonding, as well as other electrophilic addition reactions of alkenes, have been covered in separate videos. Check the links in the description below. Before we talk in detail about the reaction, there are a few essential ideas you need to be comfortable with. Alkenes are unsaturated hydrocarbons that have a carbon-carbon double bond in their carbon chain. The carbon-carbon double bond is made up of a sigma bond and pi bond, with the pi bond being weaker than the sigma bond. This weaker pi bond is quite easy to break as it has a low bond enthalpy, and this gives alkenes a relatively high reactivity. Electrophiles are electron pair acceptors. They are attracted to areas of high electron density and are electron deficient, often with a positive charge. A carbon-carbon double bond is a region of high electron density and electrophiles are attracted to this area in a molecule, making alkenes susceptible to electrophilic attack. Nucleophiles would be repelled by this high electron density and this is why alkenes react with electrophiles rather than nucleophiles. Alkenes react by electrophilic addition reactions. An electrophile accepts the pair of pi bonding electrons from the carbon-carbon double bond in the alkene, forming a new bond to one of the carbon atoms and leaving the other carbon atom with a positive charge, forming a carbocation intermediate. The positively charged carbon in the carbocation will then form a new bond with a negatively charged ion. This ion is usually produced as the electrophile gets formed. Addition reactions occur when groups or atoms are added to a molecule. Only one product is formed. In organic chemistry, we showed a possible steps occurring in a reaction by using mechanisms. Curly arrows are used to show how a pair of electrons moves to break and form bonds. The arrowheads always point towards where the electron pair is moving to. A carbocation is an ion that contains a carbon atom with a positive charge. Carbocations can be primary, secondary, or tertiary. For primary carbocations, the positively charged carbon is bonded to one other carbon group. For secondary carbocations, the positively charged carbon is bonded to two other carbon groups. And for tertiary carbocations, the positively charged carbon is bonded to three other carbon groups. A polar bond or molecule arises when electrons aren't evenly distributed between bonded atoms. One atom will have more electron density around it than the other, giving it a partial negative charge. The atom with a less electron density around it will have a partial positive charge. The greater the polarity of the bond, the more the electrons in it are unequally distributed and the weaker the bond becomes. Recap done, let's go. When an alkene reacts with a hydrogen halide, a halogenoalkane, also called a haloalkane, is formed. A hydrogen halide is a molecule made up of a hydrogen atom bonded to a halogen atom, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine. To get any reaction started with an alkene, we need to have an electrophile. A hydrogen halide molecule is polar. This is because the halogen will always have a higher electronegativity than the hydrogen it is bonded to, and as a result, will attract the electrons in the bond towards itself and end up with a partial negative charge leaving the hydrogen with a partial positive charge. This means the hydrogen becomes electron deficient and is able to act as an electrophile. As a hydrogen halide molecule approaches the carbon-carbon double bond in an alkene, the electron deficient hydrogen will accept the pi bonding electrons from the double bond and form a new bond to one of the carbon atoms. This breaks open the double bond and a single sigma bond gets left between the two carbon atoms meaning the carbon chain doesn't get broken. The pi bond contains one electron from each of the carbon atoms, meaning as it breaks and a new bond with that pair of electrons gets made, one of the carbon atoms effectively loses an electron. As a result, this other carbon atom ends up with a positive charge. An ion that contains a carbon atom with a positive charge is called a carbocation. 
As all this is happening, the bond between the hydrogen and halogen will break. The pair of electrons from the bond go to the halogen and become a lone pair. The halogen ends up becoming a negatively charged halide ion. The reaction now just proceeds as expected. The negatively charged halide ion will get attracted to the positively charged carbon in the intermediate and use its new lone pair of electrons to form a bond to it, forming the final product. The hydrogen and halogen from the hydrogen halide end up bonded to the two different carbon atoms from the double bond in the alkene. The species that initially attacked the carbon-carbon double bond was the partially positive hydrogen from the hydrogen halide, and it acted as an electrophile accepting a pair of electrons, making the reaction electrophilic. Both atoms from the hydrogen halide molecule got added to the alkene and only one product was formed making the reaction an addition reaction. As a result of both of these things, we describe the reaction and mechanism as electrophilic addition. Let's have a quick recap of this mechanism using ethene and hydrogen bromide as an example. A polar hydrogen bromide molecule gets close to the carbon-carbon double bond in ethene, and the partially positive hydrogen atom is able to act as an electrophile and accept a pair of electrons from the pi bond in the double bond in ethene. A new bond gets formed between one of the double bonded carbon atoms and the hydrogen. This forces the carbon-carbon double bond to break, leaving one of the carbons with a positive charge, creating a carbocation intermediate. Whilst this happens, the bond in the hydrogen bromide molecule also breaks, forming a negatively charged bromide ion. The negatively charged bromide ion with a new lone pair of electrons gets attracted to the positively charged carbon in the intermediate and forms a bond with it. This creates a new molecule, bromoethane. The bromo tells us that there is a bromine atom in the molecule, and the ethane tells us that we now have a saturated molecule. This reaction is an example of electrophilic addition as the species starts in the reaction, the partially positive hydrogen, acts as an electrophile and an addition reaction takes place. Two atoms are added to the double bond and only one product is formed. If an unsymmetrical alkene is reacted with a hydrogen halide, such as hydrogen bromide, then there may be two possible products that can be formed. During the first step of the mechanism, when the carbon-carbon double bond breaks, the hydrogen can bond to either one of the carbon atoms from the double bond. For an unsymmetrical alkene, this means there are two possible carbocations that can be formed. Now, in the second step, there are two possible carbons that the halide ion can bond to, giving two different possible products. For example, if propene reacts with hydrogen bromide, HBr, we can see that if the hydrogen bonds to carbon 1 in the propene molecule, carbon 2 will end up with a positive charge in the intermediate, a secondary carbocation. The bromide ion formed in step 1 will then bond to this carbon 2, and as a result, 2-bromopropane will get formed. 2, as the bromine group, bromo, is bonded to carbon 2 in the chain. However, if the hydrogen bonds to carbon 2 in the propene molecule, carbon 1 will end up with a positive charge in the intermediate, a primary carbocation. Now, the bromide ion will bond to carbon 1 in the intermediate, and one bromopropane, or just bromopropane, will get formed. When the reaction is actually carried out, there is much more 2-bromopropane formed than 1-bromopropane. This is because the secondary carbocation intermediate that leads to 2-bromopropane formation is more stable than the primary carbocation intermediate that leads to 1-bromopropane, making it easier and more likely to form. Any carbon groups bonded to the positively charged carbon in a carbocation are able to push electron density towards the positive charge. This is called a positive inductive effect. As electrons are negatively charged, electrons moving closer to the positive charge effectively stabilizes it and makes it slightly less positive. 
The carbons pushing the electrons away will themselves become ever so slightly positive and the whole carbocation still has an overall positive charge. It is just that this positive charge is now spread out a little bit in the whole carbocation, making it more stable. Because of this, the more carbon groups there are bonded to a positively charged carbon, the more stable the carbocation is. Primary carbocations have less inductive effect than secondary carbocations, making them less stable. And tertiary carbocations have more inductive effect than secondary carbocations, making them even more stable. This positive inductive effect explains why more 2-bromopropane is formed than 1-bromopropane in our example. If the hydrogen bonds to carbon 2 in the first step of the mechanism, a primary carbocation intermediate is formed. If the hydrogen bonds to carbon 1, a secondary carbocation intermediate is formed. In the primary carbocation, there is only one carbon group bonded to the positively charged carbon, given a low amount of positive inductive effect. In the secondary carbocation, there are two carbon groups bonded to the positively charged carbon, giving more positive inductive effect and making the secondary carbocation intermediate more stable. If something is more stable in chemistry, it takes less energy to form and therefore the secondary carbocation is easier and more likely to form than the primary carbocation intermediate. Following step two of the mechanism, this would therefore produce more 2-bromopropane than 1-bromopropane. There will still be both products in the final reaction mixture, it's just more 2-bromopropane will be produced, meaning we call it the major product, and less 1-bromopropane will be produced, so we call it the minor product. The ability of alkenes to react to form major and minor products in addition reactions was noticed in the 19th century by a Russian chemist called Markovnikov, and he proposed a rule, now called the Markovnikov rule, to predict the major product in such reactions. In simplified form for the reactions covered here, the rule states the hydrogen in a hydrogen halide will more likely get attached to the carbon bonded to the most hydrogens, therefore least carbons, leaving the halide ion bonding more to the carbon that is bonded to the most other carbon atoms in the alkene. At this level of study, however, it is important to understand why major and minor products are produced in terms of carbocation stability rather than simply remembering Markovnikov's rule, which I think always sounds a bit more confusing than it is anyway. So, to summarise, alkenes react with electrophiles in electrophilic addition reactions. Electrophiles, electron pair acceptors, are attracted to the high electron density in a carbon-carbon double bond. When an alkene reacts with a hydrogen halide, a halogenoalkane is formed. With hydrogen bromide, a bromoalkane is formed. Hydrogen bromide, HBr, is a polar molecule due to bromine's high electronegativity and hydrogen's low electronegativity. The hydrogen with a partial positive charge is electron deficient and able to act as an electrophile. It accepts a pair of pi bonding electrons from the carbon-carbon double bond in the alkene and this forms a new bond between the hydrogen and a carbon atom, leaving the other carbon atom from the double bond with a positive charge, forming a carbocation intermediate. A single sigma bond still remains between the two carbon atoms. As the carbon-hydrogen bond forms, the bond between the hydrogen and bromide in hydrogen bromide breaks. This gives the bromine a new lone pair of electrons and a negative charge. It becomes a bromide ion. The bromide ion will make a new bond with the positively charged carbon in the unstable carbocation intermediate and a bromoalkane is formed. The reaction is an example of electrophilic addition as the reaction is started by a hydrogen from the hydrogen halide acting as an electrophile and only one product is formed with a hydrogen and halogen getting added to the alkene, an addition reaction. If the alkene reacting with a hydrogen halide is unsymmetrical and there are two possible products that can be formed, they may be produced in unequal amounts, given a major and minor product. Due to the positive inductive effect of carbon groups bonded to a positively charged carbon, tertiary carbocations are more stable than secondary carbocations, and secondary carbocations are more stable than primary carbocations. 
This means, if possible, a tertiary carbocation is more likely to form than a secondary carbocation, and a secondary carbocation is more likely to form than a primary carbocation in a reaction. As the end position of the halogen in the product is determined by the position of the carbon in the intermediate, secondary and tertiary halogenoalkanes are more likely to form, if possible, than primary halogenoalkanes. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out other relevant videos in the links given in the description below and visit chemistrystudent.com for free notes and revision materials.